just see Flasher turn up in the box and they start chanting like a football stadium. It's like spinning back a cocoon. It's like a kick. Well, I first came to South America about over 10 years ago, really. I think my first gigs were in uh, just like 1999 or 2000. I think it's been almost two years since I've been down here, and I've been sort of questioning why I haven't done club gigs down here in the last couple of years. The crowds have been amazing. They've been, yeah, it's been really, you know, some of the best gigs of the year. We are in, in the highest point of uh, Santiago. We're here because this is the best place to do a party with Sasha. It's day two of the tour. Um, we are just about to leave beautiful Santiago after an amazing night. Great first night to the tour. Um, it's kind of one of those no pressure gigs, Thursday night, great crowd, amazing location, overlooking the whole of Santiago, it's absolutely beautiful venue. The crowd were up for it. Okay, so here we are at uh, State in Buenos Aires. Yeah, Just did a sound check, it looks amazing. It's, uh, it's the first time I've been here. And it's massive. Apparently it holds about, I think about 3,000. Everything sounds amazing, the monitors sound amazing, so I'm happy. That was amazing, life affirming. It kind of makes you realize why you do it. If every weekend was like that, it would be the easiest job on the planet. Fucking the lighting guy now. I love you! It's gonna be hard to top that kick. I love that effect they had in the club though when they put the stars on the ceiling and it yeah. all started to rotate. It's quite hard being on the road, all the late nights, being away from home all the time. And Harley is my right hand man, my tour manager, my, uh, my babysitter. <laughs> I, think I, I think I might have found my new look here. He makes sure all the, the cogs are oiled and everything works properly. And uh, yeah, I mean, this tour so far, such wood, it's gone without, without a hitch apart from a couple of tiny cars they've sent to squeeze us all into. This is the glamorous side of the job. How many bags have you got on your knees there, uh, Harley? I don't know, I think most of them are yours, too. <laughs> I've got no bags on my Yeah. Comfortable. <laughs> There's the rock star in the front, and it's got the uh, reclining chair. Harley, I think we've been to, we've been on the road now for like five years, so he's a, yeah, he's amazing. Try explain the offside rule to like a five-year-old. I've never quite got it. Okay, so there's, you, you can't, you can't be in front of the last play of the other team or there's something like that. I understand it, just explaining it's more difficult. <laughs> there has to be another player in between you it's and the keeper, it, right? It, but also, it, it, if, if you put your hand and you put the football in the, in the, in the net with the hand... You're Maradona. You're Maradona. <laughs> it's the hand of God. Harley goes to sound check. We have a technical rider that the promoters sign off of for every gig, but a lot of the time they... They'll, they'll set things up wrong or they won't provide the right equipment. Can they, can they turn it up with the amplifier? You don't want to be dealing with that at 2 o'clock in the morning. We're heading to Peru today for the last gig of the weekend. A couple of days off. Gig tonight, I know Peru is one of my favourite places to play as well. The crowd here are amazing.
I was actually part of the crowd that, that night. It was amazing. to my success I'm not really sure where it comes from the passion for music is um, obviously the driving force behind it and my connection with the crowd you know it feels very unique when I go to places like Buenos Aires I really feel like I have a strong connection with the crowds it's being able to ride changes in music as well I've kind of stuck to my guns a little bit even though that might not have led me down the most commercial route sometimes um, it's it's you know it's, it's kept my uh, career going for a a very long time. We're in the center of uh, Argentina, Cordoba. I haven't seen the venue tonight, but I think it's, is it big? Yeah, it's big, but it's almost like a, it's a warehouse space. We like warehouses. Cordoba is in the middle of the country, and uh, it's very easy coming for, from, from all the country. Uh, tonight, maybe it's 2,000, 2,500 people. Imagine with the outside. Yeah, it's gonna go off. <laughs> Sasha, it's all you want to have in a party, you know? I normally don't like talking to people <laughs> at this point, like before the game. Sasha! Sasha! <laughs> I, get, I get nervous, I always get nervous. You know, it's rocks. Is it a good thing? Yeah, I guess so. It's exciting too, it's like the belly of the, the, the butterflies in the belly. Now it's Sasha! Late last night, well, it's just about midday. I'm going to my favorite cheesy bread place in all of Sao Paulo. Yeah, Harley loves the cheesy breads. <laughs> I don't know what they call the Brazilian name for them, but he absolutely loves them. I think in Brazilian they call Pejo, Pejo de Queijo. Is that how you say it? Pejo de Queijo? Pão de Queijo. Pão de Queijo. This is cheesy goodness. This is the Pão de Queijo. And it's like heaven in a roll. Electronic music in Sao Paulo is really big. People love it. We have festivals all over the city, like 30 minutes away. And Brazilians love whatever is happening elsewhere. They really lap up import stuff. The whole renaissance we're going through musically in Europe, they're really into. Today I was like, I'm going to clash with Sasha and I had like, had like 40 comments saying, oh my God, Sasha in Sao Paulo. Last night was, um, was okay, it was, um, 
It was hard work actually. Out of all the gigs down here, that was probably the one where I've had to work the most. But once I did, they really responded, and it was, you know, the last hour of the gig was fantastic. Leaving for the airport on the, after our penultimate gig um, to Warong for this evening, for the last gig. Definitely one of the best gigs of the tour coming up. There's this really magical kind of mood change at, at Warung. Um, you sort of get there at maybe one or two and play from two till about six, and it's, it's kind of like a nightclub, and then around six in the morning the sun starts to rise and the t place turns into a day club and that kind of crossover and then the energy that the crowd get from kind of the daylight club is just, it's really amazing. It is your number one duty to make sure that people leave the club with smiles on their faces and you get, in the, you get a big reaction out of the room and that everyone's buzzing in the room and you can feel that if you're getting it right. It is your number one priority. I can't really put it into one word, it's just been a shot in the arm. To play so many great gigs back to back like that, it really restores your faith in, in what you're doing. It makes, uh, it makes my job easy when the crowds are like this.